Hello and welcome to another episode of A Soul Sake, a conversation where I bring the world's best in wellness, best in honest spirituality, people who have definitely transformed the lives of many but are willing to share their secrets with us, uh, willing to share their lifestyle, their personal lives, their practices in a more intimate setting as this conversation and today we have drum roll please Dire Shaktidas who is a London based yoga dance leader teacher trainer and a business wellness coach with a deep passion for yoga dance and meditation Dirish has dedicated over a decade of studying with teachers with masters from around the world this diverse range of training has enabled him to create a unique blend of modalities enriched by chakra astrology and card readings. Oh, we should do a card reading today. You didn't bring any cards, did you? Ah. Uh, <laughs> to help individuals stay connected to their inner light. Growing up in a Hindu household surrounded by a sacred mantra, Dirish's understanding of movement, mindful meditation, and sound runs deep. He seamlessly incorporates this knowledge into his teachings, offering a transformative experience that goes beyond physical exercise. Dirish's expertise lies in Shakti dance, yin yoga, and Eastern philosophy. By combining these elements, he creates an inspiring, dynamic, and uplifting environment for his students, preparing to break into ecstatic movement and unleash your soul's expression. With Shakti yoga dance, Dirish facilitates an exhilarating practice that enhances coordination, boosts the flow of energy, and awakens your creative spirit. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced practitioner, everyone is welcome to join and benefit from this unique approach. Through Dirish's deep practices and aligned energy sessions, Dirish has guided hundreds of people worldwide, you've got an awesome audience by the way, to radically transform their lives and businesses. His focus on reclaiming the mind, body and soul enables individuals to tap into their potential by offering a full spectrum of wellness services. He provides the necessary tools to help you energize, actualize and chakra size your life. Chakra size your life, did I say that right? Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's incredible. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Like no. to hear it. It's amazing. Yeah. No, I mean, this is I'm your like, life. Who is this guy? <laughs> Who's this mysterious chakra size your life guy? Incredible. Thank Tell you. me, what does that mean, chakra size your life? Tell me more. So we have the chakras, right? The mm -hmm. energy centers in the body. Mm -hmm. But what I get to let everyone and everyone who's listening is to give them life by exercising them. So chakra. Exercise equals chakra size. Ooh. So I wanted to make this super accessible mm. to anyone and everyone who may not have done it before, but can apply it. Very simple things. And I think the more simpler that we have it, the easier it lands. And I think when it comes to Eastern philosophy, mysticism, we need things in bite size to be able to be like, all right, I understand that. All right, that makes sense. All right, I can put something like that into action. Mm. So Sprinkle a bit of that in my life. Yeah, sprinkle. Yeah. And I just thought like things like breathing, things like moving, things like, you know, stretching, very simple things using sound you're able to activate a chakra in your body. Mm -hmm. um, we've all experienced a broken heart. We've all experienced butterflies in our stomach. But physically, you can't, it's not broken, no, there's no butterflies, but there's a sensation, there's a feeling, and that is connected to a specific chakra. So chakra is just meaning another word for wheel, energy wheel in the body. Energy wheel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so understanding that and becoming more connected to that allows you to get more in touch with who you are and what is bubbling beneath the surface. Mm. That's far out. How, what's, far what's, what's, on, what's on chakra size that we can try right now? <laughs> okay, so if, uh, wherever you are, if yeah. you feel safe for you to do so, especially if you're listening. Please don't do this while driving. Please don't do this. Or maybe you could, but maybe you don't. <laughs> so just if it feels safe for you to do so, just close your eyelids okay. and take a long deep breath in and exhale through the mouth. You're going to interlace your fingers and begin to lift the forearms and you're going to inhale and just stretch your arms all the way up high towards the ceiling on the sky. Engage your pelvic floor and your core. Hold your breath. Now turn your body to the left and exhale through your nose. Inhale to the center. Hold, stretch up a little bit higher. Sniff a little bit more air in. Exhale to the opposite direction. Inhale back to the center, reach up high towards the ceiling or the sky. 
And as you exhale, allow your fingers to just gently unfold away from each other and just let your hands just travel through your own space, through your own orbit until your hands come down. And just take a moment to just pause and just notice how still you've just made yourself and how much more maybe you feel connected to your body. There is a pulse, there is an energy. Maybe you feel that strongly or subtly. But what that does, it calms the mind, also connects you into your body. And you may feel a bubble of energy somewhere in the body. And if you scan your body and see where it feels most activated, it maybe it could be in your belly area, it could be your heart area. I know for me right now, it's my heart. So it's my heart chakra that's vibrating, right? So that's access to your heart chakra. So the more you actually access, put this into practice, exercise it, you're able to have deeper access to where, what's going on internally. Mm -hmm. And then like you could journal, you could you could make us make sounds. And the more you listen and chant, if you chant or sing, you can be able to feel in the body where is it active more. And that's how you have access to understand the chakras a little bit more just by doing a very simple exercise like that or just having a song or a chant you want to recite or sing. Mm -hmm. Is there a chant that you recommend or a mantra that you There like? is so many mantras. There are so many, like I'm looking at your top right now, Om Namah Shivaya. <laughs> yeah. Om. Oh. So when you chant it, Om, you feel it at the base. It's your root chakra, Om. Na in the belly. Ma in the heart. Namah Shi at the throat. Forehead. Va, and then top of the crown, ya. Om Namah Shivaya. So you're already, you're already activating your chakras by even saying those syllables. And the more you do it slowly, the more you get connected to it, the more you begin to feel things moving, shifting, lifting. And there you have it, chakrasizing your life in the moment. Chakrasizing your life. <laughs> Should write a book, chakrasizing your life in the moment. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> it's you heard it here first, people. Well, you probably didn't, but you heard <laughs> no, it. No, actually, it's true. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, I got a book wow. deal last week. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's yeah. happening. It's happening. Wow. It's happening. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. I'm really happy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> you were born in a Hindu family, Hindu household. Mm -hmm. And I think both of us, I mean, I can relate. I was born in a Hindu household as well. Mm. Um, we have both had to try to make our practices accessible and relevant. How do you think that's kind of being received i mean what's your perception of of do you think that maybe we're watering i mean i'm not i don't want to invite you to make a, a stereotype statement but mm. how do you navigate the balance of making things relevant whilst also keeping them authentic that's a great question um so growing up obviously you can relate you know we're surrounded by so much culture and spirituality yeah. and just so much richness but nobody really tells you why we do what we do and i kept questioning that but nobody could really give me any answers and it was so much philosophy when i looked at scriptures that we had in the house like the, the bhagavad gita and some of the other scriptures i just couldn't i couldn't even pick it up it looked so dense i just mm. couldn't relate to it. i just thought I'm, not into it mm. and I began to actually reject my culture and reject my spirituality or well, back then I was calling it a religion mm. and I thought I'm not getting the answers that I need and I started exploring other things and um, Buddhism and other aspects but still not really getting I the clarity of what it is why I'm doing what I'm doing and it's only when I when I guess yoga found me because I was seeking. I knew I've always been a seeker. I didn't know what I was seeking. But it's interesting how yoga brought me back to my origins and actually having somebody Western break it down for you actually clicked for me. It reconnected so many different things for me, spiritually, culturally, and it began to make me fill in the gaps more of like why we have deities and why we have mantras, why we do chants. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what made it simple is breaking up like that because in my household, we just call them prayers. Like it's not something that we'd say like uh, calling it Sanskrit mantras or anything. That came through specific things when I was learning Western yoga and then going into more like of the field of bhakti yoga. 
But that got me a long time to return back to bhakti yoga because it was something that, again, I was rejecting and something rejecting in myself. And the more I began to uncover what that was, it was just rejecting something which I needed answers for, but the answers began to arise in myself. Yeah. Sitting, listening, meditating, chanting, reading, um, having conversations. We know what they say when you're ready for a teacher, they all show up. Teachers showed up, masters showed up. So when you're ready things will come through to you. But again, I wasn't ready at the time because I was in resistance. Mm. And through that resistance, I wasn't able to see things. I was actually blocking my third eye because to have an open third eye, it's like having perspective, being able to see other than things in black and white. You want to see the whole spectrum of colors and everything that you do, which gives you growth, a wider perspective, wisdom and knowledge, mm. more uh, deeper knowledge as well. Incredible. So it was um, through practicing and breaking things up like the bite size really works for me and i was able to okay i have a mantra practice now that's going to help me and i feel in the vibrations and feel in the the power of the chant and the mantra i have an asana practice where i can move my body and like really be in my body because i wasn't in my body for a long time i was here there everywhere and then i had like sc scriptures and things i could read but from different translations that was accessible I think, because a lot of the old text is written at a very different time to where we are right now. And I think having perspective mm. of and how things relate into our everyday life is so vital to be able to absorb the teachings yeah. that have been passed down for centuries and centuries. Yeah. This is one author, his name's um, Svayam Bhagavan Keshav Swami. I know that's mm. a long name. Mm. We just know him as Keshav Swami. And he's yeah. created this brand called Wisdom That Breathes. Ooh, that. Wisdom that breathes. Mm. And he basically takes across uh, all of the different Vedic literatures, such as the Bhagavad Gita, the mm -hmm. Srimad Bhagavatam, the Upanishads, and he breaks it down to such a revision, bite-size, you know, it's it's incredible what he's doing. Mm. And I think that that's so much needed and so much called for uh, allowing people to, uh, yeah, receive from authentic sources and give it context and give it perspective, exactly what you said, putting maybe a lens on it that helps you to go, oh, right, yeah. that's how I can live that. Truly. And today when I hear speakers, motivational speakers, they're, a lot of the time they're regurgitating a lot from the texts yeah, that we fully, have. Yeah, fully, fully, fully. And I'm like, okay, like, it's nothing brand new. It's, mm. just, it's just expressed in a different way because, right. because we all have, we all resonate on different frequencies for, for different types of people and what they connect and resonate with. So I think it's so valid that we have different ways of translating, different ways of delivering yeah. in order to get the message out. As long as we're getting the message out, Fully. that is all that matters in order yeah. to elevate the human. It doesn't matter that there's cliques. It matters that each of us has found a, a clique which we can feel is part, you know, we can be part of. Yeah, we all want to belong, right? Yeah. We all want to have some understanding and yeah. relate. And we're all sentient beings. We all want that sense of belonging. So it's so important that we yeah. have leaders and, you know, people out there who are, you know, able to deliver this at a place where somebody, they can meet them. Mm -hmm. Like I, Like, I think the whole somebody being at the top is just very old old way of doing things and i think when you meet somebody at a level they're more receptive to receive it rather than thinking i have to be almighty i would have had i have to done all these trainings or been in the mountains for so long to even get there and it seems absolutely not you know accessible mm. so i think everyday wisdom is is the way to basically you know live forwards definitely in, definitely you know, you're at, I want to know about Shakti dance, mm -hmm. and I know it has roots and origins in tantric yeah. philosophy. Yeah, how did that come about? So I've always loved dance. Mm -hmm. So um, as a child, I would dance, but I didn't know. I knew there was something powerful going on, but I didn't really wow. understand where it was coming from. And I was always into the deities. Something about the deities' power. I was like, wow, and seeing them dance and. And it was just something that I was really connecting to. And dance for me when I was younger was a way of really releasing. Because I was like, you won't believe it. I'm talking so much now, but I was an introvert growing up. No, I was you such weren't. A, I'm That's, telling you. Really? I'm telling you, I was such an introvert. I was so shy. Like, 
If you were this to tell me, this is the me, person who I saw at Mind Body Spirit Festival <laughs> wearing sunglasses that had dangly bits coming off from the lenses, and this is you're telling me you were an introvert. Yeah, yeah. Wow. You have to, you know, you grow through, you grow through the things that, you know, that hold you back sometimes, mm. or you stay where you are. It depends. Like we all have different phases of our life. Different things happen to ignite something to wake us up. And my journey started off as someone who was introverted, who was an artist, a mover, but. And could express, but had trouble expressing vocally, and the confidence wasn't there. But that's something I chose to change and chose to kind of step into. You were born and brought up here. Yeah, in the UK? born and brought up here. Mm. Family are from Mauritius. Mauritius. Yeah, and ancestors are Indian. So mm. there's a lot of layers, mm. and um, yeah, so second generation here. So there's a lot of lot of things happening. But the dance for me, I reg- again, that's something that I wasn't comfortable or confident i went to a i went to a um a drama school as well did you i went to a performing arts school and everything as mm. well and again i still wasn't i didn't i couldn't break out of the barrier of the the limitation that i was holding but to be a side note your parents were cool with you oh, expressing... I convinced them. Oh. <laughs> I convinced them that this is why I wanted to. Like, I'm very adamant. If I want to do something, uh-huh. I'll always like find a way to do it. Um, yeah, and... I mean, for me, it was accountant, doctor, failure. Yeah. Wow, three options. What, what do you want to go down? Well, it's funny because I convinced my parents that. Well, I was like, well, at, at my other school, I was getting bullied. And I was okay. telling my parents, look, I'm getting bullied. I'm not like it here. I need to move. And this other school is amazing. And they've accepted me. And then they were like, okay. Because they could see how depressed I was, mm. like, that moment of, of my time. And, of course, that had a toll on me expressing myself. Having been at an all-boys school, like, very, like, toxic as well. Toxic behaviors and everything. I went to an all-boys school as well. Yeah, yeah. I know what that was like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I needed to break out of there. And... Um, and it was it was worth it. It was really worth it. Amazing. But the dance didn't come till later, like maybe in my late teens, early twenties, and when I was exploring more dance. And um, I was doing an ex- a sta- ecstatic dance called Five Rhythms, and my friend had brought me there, and I was like, "This is great. This is something that I've been wanting to unleash and release so long." And now there's an actual thing that does it. It's great. I was also, you know, practicing a lot of yoga and a lot of meditation. I was like, I would really love a practice that incorporated dance yoga and meditation and boom the shakti dance came into my life wow. and this was a point where i was um working at a like a spiritual center and they'd have this teacher that came and she said oh you should try it this is me okay and then something clicked when i was in that class like this kind of expression spirituality um returning back to my roots like this reconnection that was so profound for me that had such an awakening and I thought right I'm going to keep doing this because it included all the gods the god like Hindu deities included the mantras included the movements included the yoga it was such a full package for everything that I was desiring for and then once I started doing it that's when mo- it, the doors opened wow. in me and then I became more I became confident to speak and I became confident to move my body in ways I've never done before. Opened you up. Yeah, and dancing with the divine. It was just beautiful. Mm. Um, and to have that is such a gift when you really, when something can fulfill you like that, and then for you to pass it on is just such a gift. It doesn't, there's no words to describe. I'm sure you feel the same way when you're leading, you know, you're leading your yeah. mantra. Yeah. It's, and your uh, kirtan. Yeah, it's, it's. Hafiz says it best where he says, come dance with me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I feel that's exactly what happens in, in Kirtan and, and when I'm chanting that when I reach a point, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the most ecstatic moments. Yeah. Like some of the most deepest connection I felt is is in the peaceful chanting moments where it's mm. just me and God. Yeah. You know, there's, there's no distraction, just me and God. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you feel this calling, come dance with me, come sing with me, come embrace, come be with me. And uh, yeah. Something reconnect. Yeah, another another quote that I like is "What you seek is seeking you." Yeah, 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 yeah. and you know, the yeah. more you follow that, it's just the more there's a there's a, a union, there's a merging with mm. with that as well, which is pretty profound. pretty profound. It is, it is. So mm. they're the dancing for me. I continued doing that, and then so the Shakti dance incorporates and is a combination of all the different yogic roots that come together. Cool. So the Bhakti tradition. 
the tantric tradition and then it's influenced by a lot of eastern and western dances as well so classically i was trained um in odyssey classical oh. indian dance i did that oh. for yeah i did that because when i was in malaysia i i was discovered it from my teacher so i was studying symbolism and art when i was in malaysia for a while and my teacher had introduced me to this odyssey teacher and he was and he's like in his 50s but his body was like a 20 year old and like wow the way he was moving on like I'm, and it was like almost like seeing krishna like dancing with the gopis like, this is amazing and like oh. so when i came back to london i started um taking classes at um this uh, place called the Bhavan, which you probably might be Whereabouts is it? West Kensington. Okay. I would never been. <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's a school of classical Indian dance cool. and arts. I was taking classes there and it was just, um, that was, yeah, the, the base of the roots. And then, wow. But then I wanted to break out of that because there was just so many technical things. And I was like, but where's the juice? I where's the freedom? Where's the freedom? So I, yeah, that's when I was like, yeah, stepped into the Shakti space and it was just like, wow, there is so much freedom here. There uh -huh. is so much movement. But there is also... There is a guided movement too to get you to that place, that that peak of the you know the ecstatic or the euphoric moment um, to yeah. explore. I want to go down the avenue of like, see for me, I've never really fully understood tantra, mm. and I think it's because there's a part of it that the sexual nature sometimes mm. of tantra yeah. that I kind of shy away from. I'm like, oh, I don't know, that's not really my vibe. Yeah, and I just want to know how you navigate that, and even just like sexuality in spirituality. Mm. Like, whether you have any thoughts around that? Well, there is no separation between sexuality and spirituality because sexuality is creative energy. Mm. Um, I think Tantra gets a very bad rep because it it's just yeah. seen as, like, there's the sexual part of it. But right. Tantra is intimacy. It's your intimate connection in your practice, in your yoga, in your mantra, in your chanting, in your in your day-to-day, -day, in, like, having a very intimate conversation with something that's tantra that's that's the exchange of energy um it's it's taken in this new age way where it's kind of seen as just for sex but that's i mean i don't know everything about what goes on in that realm there but there is more to it than just the sex and it is power sex sex is powerful sexual the sexual energy is creative energy it's used to create procreate and it's all in the sacral chakra area which is where the if you place your hand on your belly is everyone at home you, this is this area where the navel is this is your sacral chakra this is all about where you create from it's like where you digest it's where you mm, your food gets, you know, digested, but it's also how you move, the emotions that you feel. It's all here. The butterflies in your stomach, it's like all around here. Mm. So, you know, this area, when, when women are pregnant, it's all in this area where it's all the birth is taking place. So going back to your question, I think um, there is a lot of taboo with it. And I think we need to embrace all aspects of who we are, like without... There is no spirituality without sexuality because otherwise there'd be no bringing in new life. You know, like, you know, and I always like to say like an idea comes towards the hovers of, above the crown of your head. And then if you can, if you're, if you're sensing it, you can begin to begin to see it in your third eye center. Mm -hmm. And then if you can begin to see it, you get you know, you feel excited by it. you want to put words to it in your throat chakra and then if you feel it you bring it into your heart center and then from here you bring it down to your solar plexus your manipura chakra which is your power center it's like you want to take action towards it and then from the area of your belly the sacral center this is where you create from and then the root chakra is where you give it legs you give it actualization so, but a lot of the times we make it such a nice visual. Like your body yeah. experience, visualizing the whole thing, amazing. Yeah, please, a, please, please continue. a lot of the times we get stuck. We get stuck. We can't put words to it. Somebody can have a vision for twenty five years, but not be able to put words to it because it's just, just there. Or they can't visualize it. They can't visualize it. It's like their third eye needs polishing. <laughs> it, wow. needs, it needs it needs to be open for them oh, to be able to see more, or their throat chakra needs opening to be able to speak into it. I mean, tell me more about that the polishing of the third eye because mm. I think many people and, and this is just from the experience of like community building and, and really trying to coach people yeah they have an idea of where they want to serve in the world yeah but they just can't seem to visualize it and can't seem to vocalize mm. it so these two areas like any any 
yeah, advice, anything that you can suggest about trying to... With a third eye, there are many different things you can do. But what's really great is for me, what's worked for me is visualization. It's like uh, visualizing a violet flame at the center of your brow point. So if you feel safe to do so, you can close your eyelids and just roll your eyes towards the center of your brow point and it might you know it might feel uncomfortable for the first time and you just begin to breathe long and deep into that area of the mind's eye and you just begin to if you can and if you if it's possible for you you may want to see if you can see a color or maybe something or maybe a light but the more you keep focusing your eyes there and you put the intention to open the third eye and maybe you can also bring your fingertips and gently tap the third eye as well. That's another way to to activate it. And you may need to do it a few times. And another way to do is alternative nostril breathing. So if you close off your right nostril with your right thumb and you breathe in and you imagine that light going up to the center of your brow point, you close it with your ring finger and you exhale out through the right nostril and you inhale through the right nostril up towards the center of your brow point, imagining uh, a light and closing off and exhaling out through the left nostril. If you just do this a few times, you feel you may even begin to feel a pulse at the center of your brow point. And then just relax the eyes, take a breath in. And softly, when you're ready, open the eyes halfway and back into your space. And just notice how you feel. How do you feel? Peaceful. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, there was a clarity. Like I, I was visualizing the the energy, the light wave going through as mm. I, bre- I was breathing, and it was like my visualization. Generally, my visualization is quite strong. I can yeah. see things. But a lot of the times, our third eye gets drained by looking at phones. Like it sucks oh. the life out of our phone, of our third I eye. I didn't know that. Yeah, and looking at screens and phones, and we get brain drain from it as well. Is it? Yeah, so a really good exercise like to do, I always do when I finish looking at the phone or the screen for a while, is just inhale and squeeze my eyelids, hold, and exhale, open the eyes wide. Inhale, squeeze your eyelids, and open the eyes wide, exhale. One more time, and then open the eyes wide. And just completely relaxes your your retina, your eyes, yeah. your your retina, your your eyelids. It just wakes it up a bit more. Yeah, wow. I'm gonna try that today. Yeah, just like simple things, like mm. to just really just help to reset things because we're constantly being like drained by looking. This at This has to be technology. in Chakra Size Your Life, the book <laughs> by Dr. Shakti Das. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, I mean these yeah. kind of small tips is great. It's what people are looking for. Yeah, and that's why I love like giving tips like this because it's it doesn't cost you anything. Mm. You don't have to sit for hours doing something to do mm. something like this. Simple. I think the the more you can do that, the more people are more. Um, they, they take it more to apply in their life. And that's what I want for everyone to mm. just be able to do, to apply these things in your daily life. Like I always say, if you can brush your teeth in the morning, you can do something like this for yourself. Like it doesn't cost you. It's about building a habit, a healthy habit that's going to keep you elevated and moving forwards. What's the hardest part of being a teacher, facilitator of space for you? Um, taking care of myself. Mm. Like I think a lot of a lot of us can agree that we need to, more time in for ourselves to totally. recharge. Um, to I'm getting really good at it. Like really, in the beginning, I was just all over the place. I'd feel tired. I'd feel burnt out. I'd feel like I'm um, like, oh my god, I don't want to feel like this anymore because it, I I love what I do. But if I'm showing up feeling stressed or tired, like I can't be my best. And it's important that what what I do and deliver. I feel my best because mm. it's something sacred and something meaningful that I want to translate and get across. But if I'm coming with the energy of that, it's just, it's not like, it's not, it's not the right energy. And the people feel off that as well. Cause if you don't feel it, it will fall away. Yeah, that's definitely true. I mean, it's, it ebbs and flows for me. It's like, there'll be moments where I feel very much uh, nourished and therefore it, the flow is there. I can mm. really hold space for people. And, uh, there's other moments like I'll be honest, like today I'm I'm, I'm genuinely t- exhausted. Right. Like I, I did ten day, well seven days in Italy with a retreat, which right. was beautiful, ec- yeah. ecstatic, like lots yeah. of kirtan, lots of ex- like joyful moments. Also, very a uh, few moments of solitude, which were really really nourishing. Got back, 
Uh, took my kids to Legoland <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Incredibly stressful and, yeah. and intensely. Like, they just don't give you a moment of silence, man. They always blast the music, mm. this place. And that. I was like being an old grumpy man there yesterday. My wife can attest <laughs> to that. And then today, meetings upon meetings, yeah. jump in this podcast studio, yeah. back on it again. So right now, I am very much on like the left side of the scale. Where I, I, I know mm. I need to go. <laughs> well, you know what? Everyone who's listening learn to schedule your self-care yeah. it's so important like i know that uh, before i do anything before you type text look at your phone anything is to just spend a few moments with yourself like it's the mm. it's that oh my god i gotta look at my phone oh my god i've got to like like set put my alarm off i'm like we'll just get a, a normal alarm clock mm. so it's not you're I've got like a big everything. sacred chakra, would you say? No, <laughs> What's I'm that? always doing, 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 <laughs> creating. But bringing it back in at the end of the day too, like bring your energy in, like literally pull yourself together, like get your hands I and just pull that. yourself together and bring it to your the the power the power center the the Manipura chakra, the solar plexus. And if you just like visualize, just pulling yourself together, all the conversations you have, all the energy you pour out, you need to pour that back into yourself. Mm. And at the end of the day. In the morning, I do this um, visualization of all my chakras just lighting up before I even open my eyes. I'll like just, while lying in bed. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really simple. Like root chakra open. I even say root chakra open, sacred chakra open, and then just visualize all the lights like a traffic light <laughs> going up. Wow. And yeah, just really simple things. And before I go to bed, I'll just like discharge from the day and like I'll recite a mantra in my mind or. There's different things, there's different breathing I'll do as well, depending on what kind of energy I need in the morning as well. But also in the afternoon, I'll make sure I like, you know, I'll take a yoga class or something just mm -hmm. so that I can receive from somebody else. Somebody can facilitate me. And that's really important. If you're giving, you, you need to also be receiving. Mm -hmm. And this is all heart chakra. Like if there's an imbalance, people think I'm so tired, I, I give so much. Well, why don't you learn to also receive for a healthy happy heart chakra it's also about giving and receiving at a healthy balance yeah i feel like i'm in a therapy session but <laughs> <sighs> yeah I, I don't know why don't i allow the opportunity to receive it's ingrained in us you know mm. like we we ingrained in the hustle culture and society mm. that we have to keep we have to keep our foot on the biting point all the time like it's That's like an analogy yeah it's like we because then what that does to your adrenals is like is insane so, so you know it's just learning to take your f foot off and you know for me i'm like i really want more soft life I'm what does done that mean? with the hard life. The so soft life is just ease, ease, more ease, more, more enjoyment. And like I was going to extremes of like high joys and high, high, high. But like with every high, 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 it comes every low, low, low. low, low, low. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to find equanimity. Like I want, mm. you know, I'm practicing equanimity, uh, which is more being in soft life. Yeah, it's almost only when I'm forced to do that. Do I actually go, okay, I need, I need to do something about this. Mm. But it's just, um, I think that we all just live exactly how you said on the biting point all the time. There's a pressure yeah. to perform. There's a pressure to, to be, to do, et cetera, you know? And, um, yeah. But yeah. it does take a practice. It to, takes practice. You know, it takes a practice to be able to apply these things and just not, it just, for me before, this is the thing, like going back to the beginnings of like my childhood and everything i just thought oh that's just all theory and it's all fun and mystical but like it's not real and i just thought like through my journey it's like actually applying them to make them real like mm. bring them into practice or manif like manifest and uh, interestingly like you know people use a lot of the terms of manifestation and spiritual world oh, yeah. and everything but all manifestation is is you have a thought and you take action towards it that's all the manifestation is and that very lay terms is like and taking if you take aligned action it becomes magical mm. you like you feel connected to that aligned thought that divine thought or whatever it is and you take aligned action it becomes something magical um and that's why we can you know we don't have to be thinking oh you know keep reciting affirmations every day actually if you just align yourself to what that is and if you feel like, all right, I'm going to take these actions that are in alignment, then the manifestation happens for you. It's making things happen. 
mm. rather than being stuck in the the crown chakra of like oh I really want to manifest this I really want to manifest this 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 and you're there 25 years later still. still wanting to manifest it and you see all your peers and people doing it so it's really down to like how you take that aligned action I think before it was very much about do 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 and then I just didn't do anything for a while I was like be 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 but nothing's getting done and I'm like now it's more like okay combining the two where it's healthy like it's a healthy aligned action that I feel you know centered in myself to do it I'm not putting too much pressure on myself but sometimes I feel we need a little bit of pressure I think so too. We need a little bit of pressure. Like, do we need pressure or time? Yeah. Like, that's the question. again, do we need? Pressure or time. Yeah. And just knowing, being honest about what you need. Yeah. Do you need pressure? Do you need time? I'm the kind of person, like, my wife will attest to this, and all the people that are close to me will attest. I'm a kind of guy that will always put the pressure down. Yeah. Like, I make people perform at high levels. It's, it's just the way I am, mm. like, by nature. Even though you might think, oh, he's a mantra guy, he must be very peaceful. I'm a very organized, I try to be very like, pa, 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 everything's done in certain ways, time frames, etc. What's your sign? Uh, Aquarius. Okay. Interesting that, isn't it? Yeah. Because I'm not at all like an Aquarian. In What's one your moon sign, you know? No, how do you know that? How do you find so, out? I want to find out. Yeah, like if you, <laughs> i have to do it for you at the time, but oh. I can do your chart for you. So if yeah. you give me a time of birth and day of birth, I'll, um, yeah. I'll oh, I've up. had that done before. Yeah. It's it, it's fascinating because astrology has been a big part of my journey as well, like understanding and knowing myself. And like your moon sign represents your inner self, like how you feel. And mm -hmm. your as your rising sign or sending is what you are putting out in the world. And a lot of the times we feel misunderstood sometimes. We get frustrated because we actually un don't know what unconsciously we're putting out in the world. And if we know that, we can begin to manage that mm. and begin to... It's, a, it's all about knowing the self, right? It's a whole journey. All these different modalities that are, are We're available. Doing this. I want to know what moon sign I Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just get to thinking, okay, well, this is how I can... This is how I can... Um, relax this is how i can uh, you know the best the best thing for me to relax is like this best things for me to reset is like this um, and then knowing like that, that when certain moon phases are strong because they're they can they pull on the tides of the water that is within us so we can feel a little bit charged sometimes during the full moon or emotions can be quite high end and wow. yeah it's just really coming back to understanding where you, you do these readings like, yeah anyone that wants a reading done Dirish is your person. They call soul design readings. Soul design. Yes, readings. they come back because it combines the chakras. It com I combine the chakras with the astrology and other extra extra things too. I'm fascinated. Yeah, I'm fascinated. One thing that I I really appreciate about you is that you're very um, well, just outwardly, just very yourself. Yeah. Open, free, expressive, and I think that that's been really powerful for people who are uh, of different various sexual orientations. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm trying to learn to not maybe externally, but just internally be a lot more open and free and accepting. Because I think I grew up in a household where uh, if you weren't straight yeah, or heterosexual, I don't know what the PC word for saying that is, uh, then, yeah, you, there's something wrong with you. Mm. And um, I've had to learn to adapt that way of thinking and to also be very much more open and accepting and loving yeah. of different people and, and their choices. And um, most recently, I just went on a retreat in Italy and there was a couple there, um, uh, a person who was non-binary. And I had to learn, like, what does that mean? Yeah. I had to try to facilitate space that they felt welcome and they mm. felt uh, fully invested in, in that this is a practice for them as mm. much as it is for anyone else. And... Um, I don't know, maybe they can give me some feedback whether it was successful or not. Mm. But um, I wanted to hear your thoughts on um, sexual orientation yeah. and spirituality and wellness. So it's interesting because a lot of times now we see we're in a very learning space. For I'd say, sure. And I think it's okay to make mistakes because there is, like I said, it's, it's a very new era that we're in. And, you know, some pe people call it the Aquarian age. That we're in. Which, what does that actually mean? I've always wondered. Aquarian age is like there's different ages. They all began to go align with different um, star signs. So we have the Pi the Piscean age is the old way of things very slow, um, just 
things that just weren't very moving fast. Mm. You must have remember back in the 90s where things just took forever. You think, when am I going to ever finish school? It feels like it's going so slow. Mm. Then we come into 2012, everything is just going fast. Have you just mm. noticed that like, things just go fast so quick? There's information overload. We have the internet. Like That's, that's the what, Aquarian age. Yeah, it's very fast paced in terms of things are moving quickly. Um, now... Um, now is everything's like queer and non-binary and we're learning a new era. Um, and I think what's important is that we just be, be receptive with an open heart. Wow. I think that's what any human being wants is to be seen and heard when it comes down to it. And if you can just provide the love and respect, that is enough. Wow. That is enough for me. I'm just beyond the beyond all the pronouns because i just feel like the soul is beyond this you know we're beyond that but i guess people need these pronouns to to identify where they're at in themselves which gives them validation for some because i know i know friends who change their pronouns and it's just like okay well, what are you today yeah right it's just like wow okay it's um i was having a conversation with a friend yesterday and he said like yeah he used to um, be he they and now he's just going back to he he him and he's just like yeah i'm just because you know he's also spiritual as well and he was uh -huh. just like yeah i'm also just feel i just want to just be me and i think that's just what it is people just want to be themselves and i think if you can respect that they just feel seen and that's all we want at the end of the day is to be feel seen and heard. And I think people are fighting for their lives for that in like um, queer communities, especially trans communities as well. There's a lot that, you know, people are dying. People are getting antagonized. They're getting killed because Whoa. they are trying to live an authentic life, which which is not everyone that wants to agree with it. And we all need to find it in our hearts to stay open, to love more, to listen more, and to accept where people are at in their journeys. Yeah. And if it, if that triggers you or troubles you, then that's something you need to check in yourself. Definitely. And where does that come from? And why do you feel that way? And why is why do you feel that's important to project that onto somebody who is trying to live their truth? Mm. Is there something that you're not living in your truth mm. that's bringing up in you? So... That's what we really need to do. So I would just say, be, you know, if you're if you're really coming from the heart, you can do no wrong. If you're really coming from the heart, you can do no wrong. Yeah, people will see the intention. Because like, if you speak from a place of your heart, people may not accept it, but they'll respect it. They oof, oofed. Yeah. Right. They may not accept it, but they'll respect right. it if you're honest about where your right. intention is. If you're speaking from a place of anger, from fear, from ego. They're just gonna just they're just not gonna be receptive to you at all. They're just yeah. gonna just close their ears. Yeah. But it, but it does yeah. take a lot of vulnerability to be able to speak from that place, knowing that we can live in a very harsh world with harsh people, harsh statements. A lot of people don't feel safe to speak from their heart because of consequences they've had for them in the past. So there's a lot of factors to take on. Mm. But the more we stay open and listening and learning. You know, again, if you keep your heart open and just do that, that that's enough for someone. No matter what orientation they are or represent. Yeah, they may not accept it, but they will respect it. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. Should we do some quick fire? Mm? Should we do some quick fire around questions? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> this will be fun. All right, question number one. Right. You ready, yeah? Yeah. One word, one sentence ish. It can it can it can be open. Um what's something you're curious about right now? My book. <laughs> I wanna know more, but we'll do that another yeah, yeah. we'll do another episode. We'll do another episode. <laughs> yeah. Uh number two. What's something you're personally working through at the moment? Ooh, I wasn't prepared for that. Okay. Something that I'm personally working through is self sabotage. Yeah. So I discovered that recently that subconsciously there's a little inkling of self-sabotage and that's what I'm working with. I was so surprised. I was going into this deep meditation and just scanning myself and what was going on and 
that was it. I was like, wow, wow like there's so much I need to rewire with that. Unpack. So, yeah, mm. so that's what I'm working with at the moment. Far out. I want to hear more. Yeah. Number three, in short, what legacy would you like to leave behind in the world? To love more and to keep elevating each other. Wow. That's very Dear Shakti Das. <laughs> Elevate and love. Something you used to deeply value but don't value anymore. Skittles. <laughs> <laughs> We don't value skills anymore. Listen, what happened? I mean, I've seen diabetes in my family. Oh, fine. <laughs> and also, like, I'm living more of like, I went on Ayurvedic retreat recently, and yeah. I just detoxed a lot of oh. that sugar stuff. It's just natural sugars are the best, basically. We just went. We just came back from Italy, right? And <laughs> I'm looking at Kaylee sitting in the room. We ate good food that was mm. from the ground, mm. no e numbers, yeah. as far as I'm aware, anyway. And I'm telling you. The day I got back, I ate something that I thought was going to be very wholesome. What did I have? It was something with E numbers in it. Yeah. And I just felt really undernourished. Yeah, I know. And I was like, oh, man, I wish I had a chef. Yeah. I would just like live with me and just, <laughs> just cook me good food all the time. <laughs> but okay, we've got to be more conscious. And yeah, Skittles, you're out. <laughs> okay. And number five, last one. If you could create one law that everyone had to follow, what would it be? Oh, Dance daily. Dance daily. Yeah. How do you dance? Shake a shoulder. Shake a shoulder. Shake your elbow. Shake your elbow. Shake your wrist. Shake your wrist. Shake your hips. Oh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> not on camera. <laughs> Shake your head. <laughs> cool. Dance every day. That would be epic. It was an advert that said, like, it was a Nike advert that said, mm. never trust. And I think it goes back to Aristotle or... I can't remember Plato or someone that says never trust a leader who doesn't know how to sing and dance. Mm, never that. trust a leader that doesn't know how to sing and dance. There you go. Even knowing is one thing, but at least does sing and dance. You know, mm, I think it's so necessary. Truly. I've really enjoyed connecting with you. You this too. Has been really nice. How long have we known each other? We've never actually had a sit down. I, years. Years. <laughs> I remember you used to come six hour Kiritan, Kiritan yeah. London days. Yeah. This we're talking like 10, 15 years ago. We've known each other for a long time. Yeah, but not had an honest conversation no. like this ever. No, I feel like I've gotten to know you really well. Same. Should we do this more? Do it. Okay, let's, let's book in a date. Let's, let's, let's go. <laughs> um, thank you all so much for listening. I hope you've really enjoyed this conversation. I hope that there's been entertainment, but also education. I hope there's been an opportunity to for you to feel at home with us, that you're part of our community, communities that you you feel invited to go and check out. Dirish's wonderful Shakti dancing. And uh, also, come and dance with me. Come and sing with me. You know, I'm inviting you as well. Come and chant with me. And most of all, I just want to thank you for taking the time out. Thank you, Dirish, for being here. And uh, hopefully, you. see you next week. See you soon. See you Lots soon. of love. Namaste. Namaste.